Hi, Stampers. This is Lisa with Queen Bee Creations. I want to thank you for joining me. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and everything I'm going to show you today is Stampin' Up! related. Um, we're working, since it's Thanksgiving week, we're working on a Thanksgiving card. And we're doing an easel card, but this time, rather than it being a portrait, it's a landscaped easel. And so um, that's just something a little bit different than we've done before, but I think you're going to like it. It's nice and easy and makes a beautiful car with a little bit of an impact, which is usually what I try to go for. I try to make those things that look like they're complicated be simple. This is the card and I was actually trying to use up the paper we had for Halloween and I was all done with Halloween, but I flipped them over and on the other side, I thought these look kind of Thanksgiving fall colorish. And so I made some cards using this. Um, they're all the same design, just a different color layout to show you how just a little bit of a change will make a big difference in the card. Also, I'm going to show you how to use the envelopes dies. Um, some of you were pretty upset when the other ones retired. We now have a replacement, so I'm excited to say that we do have envelope dies in multiple sizes with some additional things to go with it. The stamps that I used on these was the Country Home stamp set. I used the um, Simply Thankful and then So Grateful for Someone Like You in My Life. And then in the corners, the leaf these are actually out of the Rooted in Nature stamp set. So I was just kind of reaching for my fall leaves um, sort of stamps and some fall colors. So since I've already done these ones, I decided I would do some in the Cajun craze with my favorite Gilded Autumn paper. So I started out with a card base, which is eight and a half by five and a half. And then I scored it at the normal four and a quarter, but then I also scored it at six. So this gave me a one and three quarter inch top and then the rest of it down here. And you'll see why that's gonna make a difference later because that's how we put our layers in and how it folds up. For the inside of the card, I have a four inch by five and a quarter. For the envelope, um, I wanted to line that with the same paper. So that's five and three quarter by five and three quarter. Then the Nested dies on the outside need something approximately four and a half by three and four and a quarter by two and three quarter. And then for the two, you know, the top and bottom, these two layer things here, the top is going to be five and a quarter by one and a half and five by one and a quarter. So you'll see that it goes down a quarter inch both directions. That's how all of our layers work. This one is five and a quarter by two and a quarter and then five by two. So that's all the pieces you're gonna need. In the middle here, I've got the nested label dies. So these are the stitched nested labels. And then I've also got them in here. This is what I'm using to hold up my easel. So I'm going to need a couple different sizes. So let's go ahead and get our die cutting done because I do have our cut and emboss machine here off to the side. I'm going to bring that in for our die cutting. We grab our plates, of course, because we're die cutting. We have plate number one, two, three, and then a second three. I usually try to keep one plate clean for the top and do all of my cutting on the bottom one. It tends to keep it flatter. It also looks prettier on camera, right? The important things in life. Okay, and when I push these out, they do stick a little, especially when they're new. But if you use your fingernail or thumbnail something and push kind of close to the edge, they do pop out. They're a little stiff because they're not, these little ones I haven't used a whole lot, but also because they've got that double stitching in there. See, it's stitched on both sides. So it did the little piece that was in the middle, but then it also did the negative. So if you wanted to use this negative portion for something, you can.
So that's all of our die cutting. Now I can come back in with the base and let's do some stamping, right? So we want all of our whisper white pieces for the stamping, or actually this is very vanilla. Sorry about that. We want our very vanilla pieces. And then because I'm using the gold and Cajun craze in here, I think I'm gonna stamp in Cajun craze. If you're trying to entice your loved ones to buy you Stampin' Up! for Christmas, don't forget that on the Stampin' Up! website, you can create your wish list and then you can share it with others. Did you know that? That's a new feature of the new store they just rolled out, is that you can create a wish list, send it to people, and then they can buy you things as gifts. And if that's not something you want to do, I can issue gift certificates as well. So feel free to give them my information and let them know that you work with me for Stampin' Up! and that you want good stuff for Christmas. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the inside and I'm laying this one flat. So this is just using Stampin' Seal. And then I'm going to put these in here on dimensionals because, again, I wanted something to pop up and stop our easel. And so we have the two different sizes of dimensionals. I always have both of them on hand. I highly recommend that. On the bottom one, I'm going to use, and then I'm going to just put this on with seal. And then in order to know where I want to place it for this, I kind of arrange it where I think I want it to be and then set that there. Is this pretty easy so far? So now I'm gonna start using my strips and I'm putting this over the top of a brushed metallic cardstock. And I'm just going ahead and putting it right on there, but I do want to point out that if you're trying to make the most of your supplies, you can absolutely punch things out of the middle because once you cover it up with this, they're never going to know that there's holes under there. And then you have extra pieces that you can use on another card. Okay, and I don't know if you noticed, but when I cut it, I did line up the designer series paper. I cut them in conjunction so that they're going to line up on the front. Not necessary, but I always think it's a nice effect. I learned that from my husband because when he cuts wood, when he's making things, um, he's a cabinet maker and he will often line up the wood grain and it looks really pretty. You know, so we've got a dresser he made and each of the drawers line up with the wood grain. Now, the last thing we need to do is adhere this. And the only thing I want to caution you on is only put adhesive on the bottom. We only want this to stick to the card front, not the top. So we're going to center it as if it's centered on the card. So when it's closed, it is centered, but I'm only going to put adhesive below that line. And there you go. That's all there is to it. There's our card. And I did tell you I was going to show you how we can line our envelopes. The envelopes are in the larger catalog. Of course, there's the little index in the back, 53. Now I'm pointing these out because they kind of get lost, but we have Whisper White, Very Vanilla, and then here's those clear envelopes that I used for that shaker card. They're right here on page 153. And so if you wanted to make that shaker card or get some envelopes that you can line with our dies, that's where they are. See, they have multiple sizes for the various size cards. Because we are international, I think our European demonstrators use something a little larger. That one's going to fit this. And then the small one fits the note cards and envelopes. And then this would be your three by three. These are actually some dies that will cut out the detail. So it's not going to cut around the outside edge. It's just going to cut detail. And so this is something that you could, you could do the envelope, but you could also do the front of a card. I'm just going to take a piece of scrap paper here and I just wanted to point this out because at first I thought it was going to cut out that shape but it's actually not. See isn't that pretty? So if you were to layer that on you know an envelope flap or something you could have this as your layer 
but you could also use this, even the scrap paper, as a template to maybe sponge daub some color in there or use your stamping sponges. And then you, you could use this as a stencil. Could be the front of a card that reveals designer series paper underneath. There's lots of really pretty ideas. And then this is the stamp set that goes with it. So it can be purchased as a bundle. And of course there's this stamp on the front where you could you know, address your envelope, maybe put this on the side. Here's a corner piece. Just so many fun things you can do to decorate up the envelope because I've always, always done the inside of a card, but you also want to do the envelope. I mean, the more things you can kind of doll up, the fancier people are going to think that you are, right? All things handmade are good. And this year, above all years, I believe we ought to be sending out more cards because <clears throat> this has not been a good year and people need a smile and a handmade card in the mail brings a smile, right? Just gonna bring in my snips. I love these scissors. They are like super sharp and have a nice point at the end. They're great for fussy cutting and you make, want to make sure you have two because you want one for cutting your paper and one for cutting ribbon if you don't already have our ribbon scissors that they retired. I don't think I'm ever giving those up. These were wonderful. Sometimes it makes me sad when they retire things that I use all the time. But just know that the scissors will wear differently if you're cutting ribbon versus if you're cutting paper. So just like mom's sewing scissors, don't use them on paper. Okay, so I just lined this up to come just below where the sticky stuff is because I don't want it to actually cover up the seal to the envelope, but I want it to be in there and I want it to fold over. And then I'm just gonna put adhesive on the back and there you go. Now, I don't know if you can see, but if you hold it up to the light, you can see that the paper doesn't come all the way down to the bottom. So, I mean, you could stop your paper right here and you wouldn't be able to see it from this aspect but it might be more see-through down here. So if you're trying to maybe put a little more padding on your card to protect it a little more, you might want the designer series paper to go down a little further. But there we go, isn't that pretty? We stamped the outside of the card, the inside, and then also decorated the envelope, you know, which you could of course continue to do. I often show how I do the flap by stamping off the edge over here, and I'm changing the orientation of my stamp each time that I stamp. Now, because it allowed me to go off the edge this way, I don't want to go here because that's going to get it on the front. So I'm going to close it. There we go. We got all fancy today. Oh, so I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope you liked today's card. I thank you for joining me and I will see you next Monday right here on Facebook Live. Thanks for joining me. I'll talk to you later. Bye.